Manchester Ground. Good evening, Scandinavian 4068. Airbus A320, stand 49, information whiskey. Request IFR clearance to Oslo. Scandinavian 4068, Manchester Ground, hello. Uh, you're cleared to Oslo via Paul Hill 5, Roma departure, squawk 5014, QNH 1014. Clear to Oslo, Paul Hill, 5 Romeo departure, Squawk 5014, and we have QNH 1014, Scandinavian 4068. Scandinavian 4068, read the correct. Hello, some pilots, and thank you for joining us once again for another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. Now that we're all comfortable flying our A382NX after my previous tutorial series, it's time to add that extra element of realism to our sim flying. It's time to add some VATSIM ATC. If you've not followed my previous tutorial series and completed your first flight in the A32NX, I suggest giving that a go first. I'll put a link to that series in the top right corner. Once you're comfortable flying the A32NX, then come back to the series and we can add some VATSIM ATC to our sim flying. Anyone who watches my videos will know that I don't use the default ATC. If I'm not flying on VATSIM, I use no ATC at all. Now I know that if you're new to VATSIM, it can be intimidating at first. We've all been there sitting on the apron, listening to ATC for hours before being brave enough to key up that mic, and then we mess things up anyway. And that's fine. That's how we all start. And the VATSIM ATC know this, and they are patient with us. Just don't attempt your first VATSIM flight during a busy event, and you will probably be fine. If we do proper planning and preparation beforehand, we can make things so much easier for ourselves when communicating with ATC. It becomes easier to understand ATC instructions and requests if we already know what to expect especially at the beginning when we are still new. So in this tutorial series, we're going to go through a VATSIM flight step by step, and hopefully by the end of it, you will have completed your very first flight on the network. Now, as I said, don't be afraid to make mistakes. When you're first starting out, it will happen. You're going to say the wrong things, and that's fine. In episode one today, we're going to go through creating a VATSIM account, installing and setting up the pilot client, and then listening into some VATSIM ATC at an airport to get a feel of how things work. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, you want to head on to your internet browser and head on over to vatsim.net and that's going to bring you up to a page that looks like this now if you don't have a vatsim account at all and you are joining vatsim for the very first time you can click on get started with vatsim and yeah it says before completing your registration you must read the following you can go through all of this and read it one by one and after that you can fill in everything over here it's pretty self-explanatory and then click on register right once you've created your account and you're inside before you can log on to the network, you have to complete the new member orientation test. It's basically just a bunch of questions which test your knowledge on flying online and talking to ATC and following ATC instructions. It's very basic. It shouldn't be too difficult. If you do not pass, however, don't worry. You get to take it again in an hour after you failed the first time. Um, but you shouldn't have too much problem. I suggest before taking the test, maybe go down to uh, Learning Center and giving basically just the VATS and basics a read through and aviation knowledge, just a few minutes reading through some basic material to get you familiarized with what you need to know. If you have a basic understanding of aviation and how the operations work, you shouldn't have a difficult time to get that done. Once that's done, you can head on over to resources, pilot clients, and we need to download our pilot clients for the simulator that we are using here we have the approved software for fsx prepared microsoft fire simulator and explain and uh, improved air traffic controller client so we're looking at the pilot clients so i use vpilot for microsoft flight simulator if you are using explain you want to go ahead and use xpilot but for that you can just click on vpilot and then it says and uh, download over here so you can download that over there I'm not going to download it again. I have already downloaded it. Once you've downloaded it, double click on it to install it, and then we will open it up. Right, once you have vPilot installed or xPilot, depending on your simulator, open it up and head on over to the settings page. Okay, very first tab on the network settings, you're going to need to fill in your VATSIM ID and your VATSIM password, which was given to you once your account was approved. You need to fill in your full name over here. I've taken mine out just for this video. I'll put it back. Your home airport and your VATSIM server, I would advise to select the server that is closest to your location. 
In the second tab, we've just got some options over here for notifications. You can tick which ones you need. Flash talks bar icon for new private message, for text radio message, for cell call message, and when disconnected. Fonts, you can choose your fonts for the text messages in the controller list. Audio, here we're going to set up our audio. So you're going to choose your microphone device and your output device. So I've got my microphone set here and then my output device I've set it to my speakers on my headset. You can also set it to your desktop speakers if you want the ATC audio to come out of your desktop speakers. I would suggest having it in your headset speakers a little bit more realistic and then you have the simulator sound coming out of your desktop speakers. Your volume can be set over here. Please make sure when you're testing out your microphone it doesn't go into the red because it's really going to burst our eardrums when you key up the microphone. Here you're going to choose your push to talk button for when you want to talk to ATC. I have mine set to the caps lock button on the left hand side because that button again doesn't get used for anything else in the simulator. Model matching for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a little bit beyond the scope of this lesson but basically if you set up model matching it will show the correct aircraft and the correct liveries for the other pilots flying on VATSIM. Now you'll see pilots from different simulators. If you're flying on VATSIM and another, uh, using Microsoft Flight Simulator and another pilot is flying on VATSIM at the same airport using maybe X-Plane for example, you'll still see them in your simulator because you're both flying on VATSIM. Performance, do not display aircraft beyond 14 nautical miles, max aircraft to display, I've just left that as standard. Updates, you can tick that to check for updates every time you open up the pilot. And miscellaneous, you can automatically squawk mode Charlie on takeoff. I'd suggest ticking that as I sometimes forget to put my transponder on mode C when taking off. And that's that for the settings for the B pilot clients. Now if we have a look at the page itself, you can see we have connect, mode Charlie, ident, flight plan and settings. Here it shows controllers in range. We'll go through all of this when we are connected to the simulator and we are actually online listening into VATSIM. Okay, so once you have VATSPY opened up, it'll look a little bit something like this. Now, obviously it won't always look this busy, but I'm just happy to recording this during the cross the pond event for VATSIM. So let's zoom into an area, maybe here you have Europe and the United Kingdom, this side you have the USA and all of these black call signs that you see on the map, if I zoom in, are aeroplanes that are flying on the VATSIM network, all of these over here. Now, like I said, it's not always this busy, it's not always this many, but it just happens to be the VATSIM across the pond event as I'm recording this video. But if we can ignore that, if I take away all of these aeroplanes and we zoom in, let's zoom in, for example, over the United Kingdom. And here we can see our controllers that we have online. Now here the blue, we have an area controller. Here we have delivery, ground, tower, and ATIS all online for Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, which is Manchester. Now you can click up here, you can click on the different tabs. There's map, controllers, flights. It'll give you all the flights that are online. But for now, if I just stick to the map, and if we hover over Manchester, you can see we have Grant, Delivery, Tower, and ATIS. You can see the names of the controllers, their frequencies, and how long they've been online. So I would use this if I wanted to see which VATSIM controllers are online, if I wanted to choose an airport to fly at. So if we wanted to use uh, Manchester as example, we can go up to the corner here, we can type in the Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, go, and yeah, it'll bring up Manchester departures and Manchester arrivals. Over here in the top left, you can see the positions that are online, their frequencies, the name of the controller, their controller rating, what facility they are running and their position and how long they've been online here on the left hand side all the departures and all the arrivals so you can see these aircraft that say are departing they are probably still on the ground at manchester and it shows you where they are flying to the ones with the eta with the times they've already departed and it's showing you the estimated time of arrival where they are going to arrive at their destination then here manchester arrivals it's got it in order of the eta and it shows you the time of they should be arriving at uh, Manchester, Zulu time. And yeah, at the bottom, these two are departing London Gatwick to fly to Manchester. It shows their call sign, their aircraft, the pilot's name, their pilot rating if they have one, and then obviously their departure airport. So this is a very good tool to use. 
to check frequencies. You can get that also on vPilot when you're online or to just decide where you want to fly or to track your flight or track your friend's flight. What I would suggest when first starting out is choose one airport. For example, Manchester. Fly from that airport until you're comfortable on VATSIM. Get used to the procedures, the phraseology, and how everything works. And then once you are comfortable, you can move on to another airport. Obviously, it doesn't have to be Manchester. I just like Manchester as an example. That's where I first started flying out when I started flying on VATSIM uh, quite a few years ago. Obviously, if you have your own airport or your home airport where you would prefer to fly from, if you're lucky enough to have VATSIM at your home airport. Another good source of information, if your region has one, is to check out their own website. For example, VATSIM UK has their own website with all the information required. If I bring it up, if I go to VATSIM UK and you have a look at their website, yeah, it says uh, welcome to VATSIM UK. And if you go to pilots, you can see there's charts, airports. Uh, if I go inside their website, and you go to operations, you can go to airfield information and then look for the airfield you want to fly from. In our example, it is uh, Manchester. There it is there. And here it shows you the current meta and it will give you the departure procedures, arrival procedures, VFR procedures. Now we're only going to concentrate on IFR procedures because we're going to be flying the A32NX when we do eventually do a VATSIM flight. So we'll be looking at the departure procedures and the arrival procedures. You can also download the ARP for the airport. And then obviously here they've got some charts as well if you don't have your own charting software. I use Navigraph. And then over here you can see the online controllers and the pilots. So yes, it's a good piece of information to have. When you first start flying out, you can give it a read through, see how their runway operations work, how their parking stands are assigned and so on. We're not going to use that right now, but what we are going to do is we're going to jump into the simulator. We're going to head on over to Manchester and we're going to do a little bit of observing while they seem to be quite busy uh, with all the controllers online. So let's do that right now. Okay, so here we are inside the sim. First thing you want to do is head on over to your options, general options and uh, traffic and make sure at the bottom you've got all your generic traffic and multiplayer traffic off because we're going to only be using that some traffic for this flight. Then we can go on over to world map, choose our departure airport, which is Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. Let's uh, zoom in and find a gate somewhere in the middle of the airfield or near the runway so we can see as well. Let's choose this one over here, set as departure. Okay, with our departure set, we can check our flight conditions. Make sure that you got multiplayer off, air traffic off, because we only want to see about some traffic. Aircraft. Uh, we're not going to be flying today, so it doesn't really matter which aircraft that we choose as long as we can uh, start the engines and turn on the radio so we can listen to the ATC. I'm just going to use the 152. Alright, so here we are inside the sim in Manchester. We have a very empty airfield, no traffic around us. If I uh, zoom out to show around the airfield. You can see there's absolutely nothing in sight, all empty, nothing on the runways. So let's go ahead and change that by uh, bringing up vPilot. So once we've got vPilot opened up, we can connect. I click on connect. Call sign for today doesn't really matter. We're not going to be flying, so that's not relevant. Type code, we had a Cessna 152, so we type C 152, and we can just select that there. Again, it's not really necessary for today. Make sure connect in observer mode is ticked on so you can click on connect as observer because today we're going to be just observing. We're just going to be spectating and listening into ATC and looking at the other aircraft on the airfield. We won't be showing up on their radar screens so they can't see us. We're just going to be listening in. So let's click on connect and observer. And then you can see once it says connected to voice server. Okay, we have all the frequencies that have popped up. So we have the sensor frequencies, approach departure, Tower, ground, delivery, ATIS, and the ones we're interested in today are the all the Echo Golf Charlie Charlie frequencies. So yeah, we have ATIS, we have delivery, we have ground, we have tower, and then obviously we have the sensor controllers once we are airborne. For today, we're just going to be listening on the ground here. Yeah, so you can see we have our aircraft populated. Looks like we've got an EasyJet aircraft that's just landed. We have a A320neo there ready to line up. There's a Scandinavian. 
We've got another easy jet ready to taxi. So let's jump into the aircraft and have a listen to some ATC. We'll start up the engine so we can turn the radios on. Let's do a quick start up quickly. We've got a battery on, master on. Uh, mixture full rich, put the fuel on, crank throttle a little bit, we can prime it once and uh, let's just start the engine. Okay, there we go, we've got an engine start. Make sure the parking brake is set. That's fine. And the radios. Can't really see the frequencies because of the sun. But it's okay. Okay, first thing we want to do when we are at an airfield, if you want to listen to the ATIS information, you want to find out what runway is in use, the current Q&H, anything important for the airfield, uh, the, wind, the wind direction and stuff like that. So let's bring up V-Pilots again. And here we can see Echo Golf Charlie Charlie ATIS frequency is 121.975. And uh, so if we tune that in on the radio, we should be able to hear the ATA. So one, two, one, decimal minor seven, five. Manchester Information Romeo. Time one, four, five, zero, Zulu. Arrival runway two, three, right. Departure runway two, three, left. Transition level, flight level six, five. Surface wind one, nine, zero degrees, five knots. Varying between 160 and 220 degrees, visibility 10 kilometers or more, few at 2300 feet, temperature plus 15, dew point plus 11, QNH 1007, threshold QFE 998 hectopascal. Acknowledge receipt of information, Romeo, and advise aircraft type on first contact. Right, so there you have the eight information. information. Let me just stop that for you quickly. So the important thing we want there is obviously the ATIS information, which is the information letter that they assign each ATIS report. So the ATIS knows you've listened to the ATIS, they're gonna require that from you. You obviously want the runway that they're in use, so you know where you're going to depart from, so you can plan your departure. And you also want, for example, the weather and the Q&H or any other significant information. Now, if you struggle to yeah, the ATIS information, what you can do is bring up vPilots again, and if you double click on ATIS, you get a chance text format, so you can actually read it out. So it'll tell you arrival runway 23 right, departure runway 23 left, transition level is flight level 065, surface wind 190 at 5 knots, varying between 14, one, varying between 140 and 230, visibility more than 10 kilometers, few clouds 2800 feet, temperature 16 dew point, and so on. There's a Q and H. Acknowledge receipts of information Sierra. So this is the ATIS information information Sierra. So you'll give that to the delivery controller or the ground controller, depending on who's online, when you request your departure clearance. So now that we've got the ATIS and we know we have information Sierra, we have runway two three left for departure, and we have the Q and H of one zero zero seven. Those are the three most important things you want for requesting your departure clearance. So now we're going to tune into Manchester delivery, which is one to one decimal seven zero zero. And this is the controller that's going to be giving all the departure clearances to the aircraft. Let's uh, tune in that frequency right now. It's one to one decimal seven zero zero. Let's listen to a few examples of some departure clearances. If we bring up that spy, and we go to Echo Golf Charlie Charlie again, we can see the departures. It should be one of these aircraft. If they haven't already called for departure clearance, we should hear them shortly. Okay, I'll just move myself a little bit further away. Mark, the delivery blue camera 521 with a 737 800 who's working clearance to other than. Blue Panorama 521, hello, report your stand number. Uh, ramp 211, Blue Panorama 521. Blue Panorama 521, thank you. Can you accept flight level 240 as your final level? Sure. 
should be okay, but it's kind of like two one. Ship it? Yep. Lovely. So, clear to Aberdeen. Hull Hill 1 Yankee departure, Squawk 0526, and flat level 240 as your final level. Uh, clear to Aberdeen via the 1 Yankee departure, Squawk 0526, clear panorama 521. Clear panorama 521, Pole Hill 1 Yankee departure, the Papa Oscar Lima 1 Yankee. Uh, Papa Oscar Lima 1, yes, departure, blue panorama 521. Blue panorama 521, correct. Report fully ready on my frequency. Report fully ready on your frequency, blue panorama 521. That was very good example for listening into our first departure clearance. This pilot, he forgot to give his stand number when he called for clearance. So, he just asked him for it and then he gave it and they moved on from there. His cruising altitude, as you can see here, of 32,000 feet is also far too high just for a flight from Manchester to uh, Aberdeen because that's where he's heading to. It's very close. So you wouldn't climb all the way to 320 just to descend again into Aberdeen. So the controller asked him, can he accept flight level 240, which is more appropriate. So he'll change that on his flight plan. And lastly, he didn't repeat the Pole Hill 1 Yankee departure when he repeated his departure clearance so the controller just gave it to him spelt it out papa oscar lima one yankee just to make sure that the pilots had it again and then he's read back the correct departure so absolutely nothing wrong with making a few small mistakes as you can see the atc are more than capable of giving you a hand and correcting you where you need it and this guy's got his departure clearance so now he'll put in his squawk code when he is ready for push and start, he will contact Manchester Clearance Delivery again and they will pass him over to uh, Manchester Ground, which will give him permission to push and start and then uh, obviously taxi through to the runway. I hope he hasn't done that yet. Let's move over to Manchester Ground, which is 121.850. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for flying. Have a good evening. I'm just going to leave in 450 for a taxi. Standing in 452, the taxi holding by Foxtrot 1, the Juliet Foxtrot, and Kilo. Taxiing to Foxtrot 1 via Juliet Foxtrot and Kilo. Just going to be in 450. Right, so Scandinavian has just been given taxi instructions to taxi to Foxtrot 1. And it's very important. I just need to mute this again while I talk. So it's very important that you have your ground charts available when you're flying on VATSIM so you can follow the taxi instructions that you are given by the ATC and make sure that you don't cause any traffic conflicts. So I use Navigraph. If I bring up Navigraph quickly just to give you an example. Okay, Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. Let's look for the ground chart. So taxi, let's go to airport. And uh, maybe we'll go parking stands because I'll show you a better example of all the taxiways. So here we go. That aircraft was parked there on Juliet Foxtrot, Scandinavian. And he gave him instructions, Juliet Foxtrot. Five, five, contact Tower 118 Decimal 625, have a flight. Contact Tower 118 Decimal 625, thank you very much, have a good day. Juliet Foxtrot, Bravo, Kilo, to Foxtrot 1. Uh, ready for pushing forward. Blue Panorama 521, stand 211, pushing start to 2, facing south. And to Foxtrot 1, where he's passed him over to the Manchester Tower, which will give him permission to cross the active runway. This is the arrival runway to continue taxiing over to the departure runway. 
Now, while I was talking there, the first pilot that we listened to get his clearance has requested push back and start. Bravo, zero, zero, one, Manchester ground, are you with me? Okay, that aircraft has gone on to tower's frequency now. It's given him permission to cross the runway. And he will obviously give him takeoff clearance once he gets to the departure runway, which is that side. Project 7, triple one, ready to taxi. Ponder seven triple one ground. Ponder seven one 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 taxi holding point Papa one. We are in November Charlie Echo Delta and Papa. Tom Jet seven triple one taxi to holding point Papa one by November Charlie Echo Delta and Papa. All right, now here's another example of a long taxi clearance. So. He has holding point Papa 1 and he's been asked to taxi via November Charlie, Echo, Delta, which is down here, and then Papa, which goes down here. So that's his taxi route. So make sure that you have a pen and paper ready when you get your taxi instructions. So you can write down November Charlie, Echo, Delta, Papa to Papa 1, and then you can read it back to the controller. Taxi to Papa 1 via November Charlie, Echo, Delta, Papa. And then you're Manchester ground, good day. Your wings on Papa Bird, that's then 4 1, ready for push and start. Your wings on Papa Bird, stand 4 1, push and start through, straight push, QNH 1007. Start push, push approved, push straight ahead, QNH 1007, your wings on Papa Bird. So this is Euro Wings that's just requested push back. So the controller has asked him to push straight back. He doesn't have to turn left or right. And then he's going to be given taxi instructions, same as the previous con pilot, probably to Foxtrot 1, where he'll be handed over to Tower. Okay, as he taxis towards the runway, let's, ch let's change frequency now to Manchester Tower and listen to a few arrivals and departures. So back on... So back on B pilot, we've got Tower 118. One one taxi holding point Bravo three via Bravo expect stand five four. Fifty five four Bravo three via Bravo sky flight one one. So that was an arrival, so he's been given taxi instructions to the gate. As I was saying to to Manchester Tower one one eight decimal six two five. So if we jump back into the plane, one one eight decimal six two five. is Manchester Tower. I think we can move a little bit closer to the runway now that we have Manchester Tower. Scanning in 450, passing 1000. Scanning in 450, you can continue with Unicom 122, just like up nicely. Continue on Unicom 122, just like thank you, have a very good evening. You have a good evening as well. Okay, so that Scandinavian has just departed. There's no online ATC after tower because... Uh, Tomjet 7 one at PAP-1, uh, ready to cross runway 23 right. Tomjet 7 one if you're ready to cross, uh, actually you can disregard that because there's no cross from final, hold position. Tomjet 7 one hold position. Okay, so this time has been asked to hold permission. Yeah, the okay, he should be repeating his takeoff clearance, that little plane. Okay, but this aircraft's been hold, told to hold position on 2 3 right because there's an aircraft on final. There was. Maybe he's going around. Maybe that's not him. Okay, I can't see him right now. So now that we're on the tower frequencies, tower is responsible for the two runways and the taxiways surrounding the runways. So as you can see, this Tom Jet was given over to tower from the ground controller before he crossed this runway. And he will be given permission to cross the runway and then obviously he'll be given permission to take off once the controller deems necessary. Tom Jet 
Good idea, yeah, Clash is uh, going to ask for me some. Uh, Vibe up one, Clash number two, Flight one, say, okay, to text on point Tango one. Come to 741, clear to cross one way two three right, and taxi to ta Tango one. Okay, so they've been given permission to cross yeah, the runway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were currently uh, a little bit higher, so just uh, hold. Okay, so we're just going to hold the for me a second, just a second. Okay, so we're on, on approach, but we were currently high, so we're just going to go uh, hold, lose my altitude, and come back into uh, approach. Easy, we'll come back to you. Easy, we'll come There we have the Tom Jet, which is in position to taxi onto the runway or line up and wait once the departing aircraft is clear of the runway. He'll be given his takeoff clearance and then he will take off and be handed over to Unicom, which is a pilot controlled frequency because there's no controller above to hand over control to. So he will continue flying pilot controlled under Unicom until he flies into the next airspace, which is currently manned by ATC. I think that's where we're going to leave it for today with a bit of listening in. I would advise you guys to spend a little bit more time on the ground like this, listening to ATC, getting a feel for the procedures, working up your confidence until you know what to say. And Tom Jet, uh, seven, uh, question, Tom Jet, 7, triple one, uh, line of flight, one, two, three, Tom Jet, 7, triple one, uh, line of flight, one, two, three, left. Tom Jet, 7, triple one, line of flight, one, two, three, left. There he's going to permission to line up and wait, but not to take off. So he will we'll line up on the runway and he will wait until that aircraft is a clear distance ahead of him. And then he will be given takeoff permission. As I was saying, make sure that you get a feel for how things work. As you can see, you're allowed to make mistakes. It's not the end of the world. They are going to help you. Just don't connect to a busy airport during a busy event where the controllers are swamped with a lot of traffic. Because then obviously they're going to get a little bit frustrated with you. Spend a few nights at a specific airport listening in to a specific frequency once you got the, that handle of that frequency move on to the next frequency sort of like anticipate what the controllers are going to say to the pilots and once you've got that done i think you'll be ready to connect to the network i hope you have found this video informative if you have please leave a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already it really helps us out we are going to be doing a full flight soon so make sure you got your vatsim account set up and ready to go for that and make sure you catch up episode two where we're going to do an IFR departure. What we will do is we will file a flight plan. We will talk to ATC. We'll get our departure clearance. We'll get our taxi clearance and our takeoff clearance. And then once we've departed the airfield, we will continue from there. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. We'll see you in episode two for the IFR departure. Take care.